Richard Jusso Gordon, born August 5, 1945, known as Dick Gordon, is a Filipino politician and broadcaster who currently serves as a Senator of the Philippines and the Chairman of the Philippine Red Cross. As a politician, Gordon gained national prominence as the Chairman of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority during the administration of President Fidel Ramos, and as Secretary of Tourism under the administration of President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. In 2004, he was elected as senator under the senatorial ticket of President Arroyo. He ran for president in the 2010 Philippine elections as the standard bearer of Bagambayan Volunteers for a New Philippines, but was unsuccessful in his bid. In 2013, Gordon declared his intention to run in the 2013 election for a position in either the Senate or in the local government. He ran for the Senate under the United Nationalist Alliance coalition in that election, but failed to earn a seat having placed 13th. Gordon ran again in the 2016 election, this time as an independent, where he placed 5th, garnering a seat. Apart from his current position in the Red Cross, he works as a broadcaster for News 5. He presently hosts the radio show Axion Salyasayan with Amelin Beloso on Radio 592.3 News FM and the television show Duello, Barilin Ng Opinion on Axion TV. Early life Gordon was born in Castilejos, Zambales, the son of James Leonard Gordon, a local politician of half-American Jewish roots, who was the second municipal mayor of Alangapo and first mayor of Alangapo when it was converted into a city, and Amelia nay Jusso, Gordon, Alangapo's mayor from June 1967 to June 30, 1972. Education in 1958 he completed his elementary education at Lord's Catholic School now Lord's School of Quezon City in Quezon City and Colegio de San Juan de Latran in Manila. He then finished his secondary education in 1962 at the Ateneo de Manila University. He stayed in Ateneo and completed his tertiary education, earning a degree of Bachelor of Arts, major in History and Government, in 1966. After serving as a delegate to the 1971 Constitutional Convention, he successfully pursued a Bachelor of Laws degree at the University of the Philippines College of Law in the year 1975. Gordon joined the Upsilon Sigma Phi fraternity in 1968. Between 1966 and 1967, he served as a brand manager for Procter and Gamble Philippines. As the 1960s came to a close, he aided his mother Amelia in running the government of Alangapo after the assassination of his father James. In 1975, he became an associate for the prestigious Accra Law Offices. Political career in the year 1971, while still studying at the UP, he was elected as the delegate of the 1st District of Zambales to the 1971 Constitutional Convention, which drafted the 1973 Constitution of the Philippines. He was the youngest delegate in the said convention. Alangapo Mayor In 1980 he was elected mayor of Alangapo City. During his term as mayor, Alangapo soon became a highly urbanized city by the year 1983. Under his leadership, Alangapo City was converted from being a sin city into a model city by raising police accountability through ID systems, proper health and sanitation, waste management, and the strict observance of color coding in public transport. In 1986, Gordon and then San Juan Mayor Joseph Estrada became allies. Gordon gave way for the Aquino appointed officer in charge after a formal written directive from the executive secretary representing Aquino was issued. In the same year, he joined Philippine Vice President Salvador Laurel in reorganizing the Nationalista Party around the country. They campaigned for a no vote on 1987 constitution framed by the Aquino appointed constitutional convention. In 1988, he was elected as mayor with the help of the Nationalist People's Coalition, a breakaway of the Nationalist Party under Eduardo Danding Kowanko. On September 1991 Gordon led a nationwide rally for the retention of the U.S. bases in the Philippines. The U.S. naval base in Subic Bay was a major income-generating client of Alangapo City. 
In the same year, Ilongapo experienced the greatest volcanic cataclysm of the century when Mount Pinatubo erupted and dumped 14 inches of wet ash on the city. However, on September 16, 1991, the Philippine Senate voted 12-11 to reject the extension of a basis treaty. Subic The looming withdrawal of the Americans from the U.S. naval base in Subic meant the loss of over 40,000 jobs for Filipinos who were employed in the said base. Also, $8 million worth of infrastructure left behind by the Americans in the base and was in danger of being looted from outsiders, as evidenced by the looting that occurred in 1991 at the Clark Air Base due to the aftermath of the Pinatubo eruption. To address the problems beforehand, Gordon led the citizens of Ilongapo to mobilize and lobby for the inclusion of a free port concept into the national legislation for the conversion of the U.S. bases. The effort was successful, with the inclusion of the establishment of the Subic Bay Freeport Zone also known as the Subic Special Economic Zone in Section 12 of Republic Act No. 7227, otherwise known as the Basis Conversion and Development Act, which was approved on March 13, 1992. Section 13 of the same legislation also provided for the establishment of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority (SBMA), which was tasked to administer the Subic Bay Freeport Zone. On April 3, 1992, Gordon was appointed as the chairman of the SBMA by President Corazon Aquino. By November 24, 1992, the U.S. Navy completed its withdrawal from the facility and its conversion for civilian and commercial use began. Volunteerism and the high civic spirit of the host community marked the pioneering efforts at conversion. In the 1992 local elections, Gordon was re elected as mayor of Ilongapo City by a landslide victory. In 1993, a citizen questioned Gordon's dual duty as mayor of Ilongapo City and as chairman of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority. The Supreme Court decided that Gordon must hold one position. Gordon decided to vacate his position as mayor and assumed the position of SBMA chairman in full capacity. In the 1995 local elections, his wife Catherine, a three-term congresswoman, was elected mayor of Ilongapo. In the 1996 APEC summit, 18 world leaders were impressed with the facility and Subic became a new investment hub in Southeast Asia. Blue chip companies like FedEx Express, Enron, Coastal Petroleum now El Paso Corporation, Taiwan computer giant Acer and France Telecom's company Thomson Saw invested $2.1 billion in the Freeport reinvigorating the economy and creating 200,000 jobs replacing those lost during the U.S. Navy withdrawal. In 1998 Gordon resigned as chairman of the SBMA in order to run for president in the national elections held during that year. However, he eventually backed out from pursuing his candidacy. He was later reappointed by outgoing President Fidel Ramos as chairman of the SBMA for a new six year term. In the 1990s, Gordon was a fierce critic of Joseph Estrada due to their difference of opinions regarding the U.S. naval base. This was seen as early as 1991, when Gordon refused to let then Senator Estrada film inside Subic Bay for a movie that criticized American bases in the Philippines. After winning the 1998 presidential elections on May of that year, newly elected President Joseph Estrada issued Administrative Order No. 1, which ordered the removal Gordon as chairman of the SBMA. Estrada appointed Felicito Payumo, Gordon's critic and congressman of Bataan as new chairman. Gordon refused to step down, stating that his reappointment from the Ramos administration gave him civil service protection. The removal process was not easy. Hundreds of volunteers and paid people barricaded the gates of SBMA and Gordon locked himself inside the SBMA Administrative Office Building 229. After this, he was dubbed a dictator because of the fact that he rebelled against an executive order. The issue sparked the interest local and foreign press known as the showdown at Subic on YouTube. Gordon filed for a temporary restraining order before the local court. The local court of Ilongapo granted Gordon s request but Payumo s party filed an appeal before the Court of Appeals CA the CA reversed the local court's ruling and it was affirmed by the Supreme Court with the Supreme Court decision Gordon called Payumo and turned over the reins of SBMA at the Subic Bay Yacht Club two months later on the 3rd of September 1998 together with the Subic volunteers they cleaned up the facility Arroyo cabinet 
In January 2001 Gordon actively participated in the second EDSA revolution that led to the removal of Joseph Estrada from the presidency. Newly installed President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo appointed Gordon as Secretary of the Department of Tourism. With his experience as a former brand manager of Procter & Gamble Philippines and chairman of SBMA, Gordon placed the Philippines in the international tourism map by actively marketing the Philippines in several tourism expositions and road shows with the WOW Philippines campaign strategy winning awards at ITB and WTM. From 2002, after four years of negative growth and in spite of threats of terror post 9-11, Abu Sayyaf kidnappings, SARS, Oakwood mutiny, tourism arrival increased heavily. He also encouraged domestic tourism by holding regional events and having provincial destinations showcased at Intramuros and the rationalization of holiday economics. He held the position until January 2004. Senate in the 2004 national elections, Gordon ran for Senator of the Philippines under the Coalition ng Katapatan at Karanazan sa Kinabukasan Coalition of Truth and Experience for Tomorrow, of President Arroyo. He won the election with 12,707,151 votes, which was the fifth highest number of votes from the electorate. During the 13th Congress 2004-2007, as Chairman of the Senate Committee of Constitutional Amendments and Revision of Laws, he upheld the supremacy of the Constitution at all times. Though he may not have voted for the ratification of the 1987 Constitution, he took an oath to preserve and defend it. He insisted on the lawful process of charter change only according to the process set forth in the Constitution. He opposed the method of constituent assembly or con -ass". Initiated by President Arroyo and House Speaker José de Venecia, Jr., which was possible in the 1935 Constitution but unlawful in the current Constitution, as well as the dubious Saga ng Bayan People's Initiative and was one of the triumphant parties in the case of Lambino and Almentado v. Comelec, gr. No. 174153, October 25, 2006. He also preserved the separation of powers in government and asserted the Senate's constitutional right and duty to conduct inquiries in aid of legislation against Executive Order No. 464 in Senate, et al., v. Ermita, gr. No. 169,777, April 20, 2006, and Executive Order No. 1 in Savio v. Gordon, et al., gr. No. 174,340, October 17, 2006. He was also responsible for the passage of Republic Act No. 9369 or the automated election system to obviate cheating and post-election controversies and protests that hound Philippine elections. On April 9, 2008, Ara Inca Jiting and Ardea Valor in Bataan, President Arroyo signed into Law Republic Act No. 9499 Gordon's Veterans Bill. The Filipino World War II Veterans Pensions and Benefits Act of 2008 amends Sections 10 and 11 of Republic Act No. 6948, as amended, by removing the prohibition against our veterans receiving benefits from the United States government. Before the law was signed, the Philippine government benefits of veterans would be revoked once they were granted benefits by the United States government. Because of Gordon's advocacy and persistence, this prohibition is now eliminated, and Filipino veterans will now be able to receive any form of benefit from any foreign government without losing the benefits given to them by the Philippine government. He was the principal author of the National Tourism Policy Act of 2009 or Republic Act 9593, declaring a national policy for tourism as an engine of investment and employment, growth and national development that was signed by President Arroyo in Cebu on May 12, 2009 and witnessed by the country's tourism private sector. Election, 2010 on August 5, 2007, Gordon was asked in a radio interview in DZBB if he had any plans to run for president, to which he answered, Well, I am available. He further elaborated that he plans to form a new political party aimed at pushing for the interest of the Filipinos and that he would run on a platform that is, pro-people. 
His comments were eventually reported the next day on newspapers such as the Philippine Star, Malaya, Daily Tribune, and Abanti. Gordon quickly issued a press release on August 6, 2007, to clarify his comments in the DZBB interview. In the press release, he said that he did not declare his candidacy in the interview but merely answered to the interviewer's question regarding the possibility of him running for president. He further said that he would like to focus more on his work at the Senate, the Philippine National Red Cross, and the various causes that he supports. On April 26, 2009, the Bagambayan movement was launched in the Rizal Park and in the Manila Hotel. The movement, which advocated transformative politics, served to push for the presidential candidacy of Gordon in the 2010 elections. The movement was eventually recognized as a political party by the Commission on Elections Comelec, in October 2009 on November 29, 2009, then Metro Manila Development Authority Chairman Bayani Fernando revealed that he and Gordon were having discussions on a possible team-up for the 2010 elections. A few days later, on December 1, 2009, Gordon and Fernando officially announced their tandem during a press conference at the Senate Press Office in Pasay City, with Gordon running for the presidency and Fernando running for the vice presidency. During the press conference, they billed themselves as the Transformers, since they intend to transform the nation. Later in the day, the tandem filed their certificates of candidacy in the Comelec main office. On May 11, 2010, Gordon was third to concede the presidential election to Senator Noynoy Aquino. Criticisms and controversies Alleged corruption in 2009, Gordon was named as one of the people behind the bribery and protectionism in the construction of a US$120 casino and hotel in Subic. Gordon was a director of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority who oversaw the project at the time. In 2013, Gordon was implicated in a 200 million pesos fund anomaly in Red Cross where the Red Cross chief accountant stated that funds were allegedly misused for Gordon's baller IDs and Magic Singh. Gordon also spent 5 million pesos for a website. In September 6, 2017, during a debate in the Senate, Senator Antonio Trillanes brought up the issue of Gordon's alleged corruption in the Red Cross to the floor and threatened him with an ethics case. Alleged control of sex tourism drugs. Since the mid 80s, Fr. Shea Cullen, founder of Preta Foundation and a longtime critic of Gordon, has vehemently made accusations that Gordon's policies in Alangapo and subsequent SBMA has not been curbing prostitution but simply controls it in Subic. Following this, Cullen in his online posts alleges that the corruption and drug trafficking scandals in Subic started because of Gordon, portions of which Senator Hontiveros quoted during a Senate session. On June 28, 2017, Martin Dino, the chair of SBMA, revealed that there is rampant corruption and drugs smuggling going on in Subic where contraband drugs are smuggled in disguised as sugar. Alleged lawyering for Paulo Duterte during the Senate investigation on the 6.4 billion pesos drugs smuggling case, Senator Trillanes accused Gordon of lawyering for Paulo Duterte and Manazas Carpio, Paulo Duterte's brother-in-law, when Trillanes grilled witnesses and moved to have Duterte and Carpio appear. Trillanes has called the investigation panel that Gordon heads as Committee de Absuelto, due to how every investigation into Duterte S alleged crimes became an opportunity for Gordon to absolve Duterte and his friends from any alleged wrongdoing. The first instance was when Edgar Matabato testified against Duterte and how Gordon ruined the witness's credibility and irrationally dismissed De Lima's accounts because she failed to answer his confusing questions. The second instance was after Arthur Lascanas corroborated Matabato's testimony when Gordon influenced other senator. S. Opinions by also attacking Lascana's credibility without a full investigation. Deadly Senator Blogs outed Gordon as one of the seven deadly sens, 
Senators who did not sign Senate Resolution 516 that condemns the spate of killings under the Duterte administration. Gordon, among the senators, defended themselves stating that they were unaware of such resolutions being passed around. Critics have pointed out that they have to be utterly ignorant when almost all of the other senators have been circulating the resolution to be signed for months. Personal life Following the end of his Senate term in 2010, Gordon, together with Amelin Veloso, anchored Axion Salyasion Mondays to Fridays, 10 to 11 a.m. on 92.3 News FM and Axion TV Free Channel TV 41, Channel 29 in Cebu and Davao. He also co-hosted with Jake Makasat on Duello. Mondays to Fridays, 7 to 8 p.m. on Axion TV Free UHF TV 41. Red Cross Since 1986, Gordon was elected as governor of the Philippine Red Cross, and spearheaded the rescue, relief and rehabilitation of various disasters from shipwrecks, typhoons, 1990 earthquake in Cabanatuan, 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo, 2004 landslides in Aurora, Quezon and 2006 Jinsagun, Southern Leyte mudslide and the Philsports Arena stampede. He is currently the chairman of Philippine Red Cross. Ancestry See also Bayani Fernando, the running mate of Richard Gordon in the 2010 elections. External links Official Philippine Red Cross, the Chairman Senate of the Philippines, Richard Gordon Profile References, <references>